there's nothing else specific coming up. I'd like to, to begin with what I talked about yesterday at the beginning of our session was going through the review of the first 25 lessons. Not going through every single lesson, but there's the review sections after the lessons that have little paragraphs that are several sentences long that just review the main ideas of each lesson. And this can be really powerful because if you really can stay with the awareness of what's in those first 25 lessons, you know, it really is a protection for your mind. I mean, it's, you get to the later lessons of I am the light of the world and peace and joy and love abide in me and I am as God created me and, and so many times I keep hearing people say, I just don't always experience that. I just, at times I feel kind of sarcastic when I'm even reading the lesson because there's a part of me that just doesn't believe it. And so that's why we go back, <laughs> ones that come before it. And if you really can hold, stay with those first, the metaphysics of those first 25 lessons, you've got the whole metaphysics of the course. And you'll be very safe because you won't, you, you won't slide off into the, the patterns. You could also think of the first 25 lessons as kind of like if you if you had a blackboard with all this scribble and all this chalk all over it, it's kind of like a big eraser coming out and erasing all the, the clutter. And more so than an eraser, because even the eraser it leaves some chalk. I always, when I was a kid in school, I always loved it when the teacher would come out with that wet rag. You know how, the, how a blackboard looks after it's been gone over? It's really black. With a, yeah, yeah. Clear. I mean, it's, there's nothing on it. There's not even any dust, chalk dust on it. So you can think of those first 25 lessons as getting the wet rag out. That's the way you stay clear in your mind is if there's even dust, chalk dust hanging around, it will get irritating. So get the wet rag out, and, and if you hang with it, that will... In either case, it's the lesson 51 is where the review be begins. If you can, if you can just get the, these first 25 review lessons down, you know how the old they used to say in school. Now this is going to be very important, students. Memorize this. Well, not only memorize th these, but it's best to know, I would say, know these like the back of your hand. You know these so well. You know, it's like Keith was talking yesterday about being prepared for a test and that feeling of control and power. You know these first 25 review lessons so well and you, you will be oblivious to the ego. <laughs> if you really, because all the metaphysics that undo the ego are right here. You know, it's, it's pro, they're very profound. And, and if you really want to be happy and you want to protect your happiness, so to speak, and you really value peace of mind, it would be worth really reviewing these very consistently, you know, maybe even daily, and going over them. So we'll go through them, and, and we'll, if there's anything that comes up, even as we're going through them, any kind of questions or whatever, then just bring, bring it forth and that way it'll help anchor the meaning and get clear. Keep it there. Number one, nothing I see means anything. The reason this is so is that I see nothing and nothing has no meaning. It is necessary that I recognize this that I may learn to see. What I think I see now is taking the place of vision. I must let it go by realizing it has no meaning so that vision may take its place. What about the words on this page? Nothing. They mean nothing. Meaning comes from your mind. You, as I used, as I said yesterday, the wor these words were invented to 
maintain the separation. And the very words you see, even the words on this page <laughs> were invented by the ego to maintain the separation. There is no the reason this is so <laughs> in heaven. So you can apply that to everything, including the words in this page. If you wanted to apply it right now and not even go to lesson two or lesson 25 and just to totally apply this lesson completely, this very instant, this very page that's in front of you, you have salvation. Here you go. <laughs> As it's been said many times, all you've got to do is get get it once or get it some way. The reason that there seems to be so many pages and so many different angles is because there's such resistance to get it. As Jesus says at one point, the correction takes no time at all, but the acceptance of the correction can seem to take forever. There's great glory in this. If you just, wherever you seem to be, whatever you seem to be doing, you know, you can always come back to this, to glorious, this glorious lesson number one. Whenever you start feeling worked up or tight or tense or stressful, <laughs> start. You can start practicing as you move your eyes around wherever you seem to be. So it, it to clarify that it's saying that there's nothing. It's like saying that there's nothing objective in the outside world. And it's also saying that that the world, the projected world, is unreal. So you're seeing nothing. I mean, this is that, that would be a pretty good definition of a hallucinating, a hallucinatory state. Is you're seeing nothing, or you're seeing something that doesn't exist. You know, like to use the metaphor in the world would be more like like um, seeing a mirage on a desert. But this is saying the desert, <laughs> the desert doesn't even exist much less the mirage on the desert. There's nothing that is being perceived that has any... I'm just trying to get existence. behind this means anything. Like, this doesn't mean anything. But yet this seems to be the tool that we're using to come to the realization. It seems that way. But again, what's in the world is just symbolic or representational. And... The way to come to the awareness of your true identity is, is in the mind. The Course, I mean, even when we use the word tool, and I know that that's even being put in our journal, I think that something about David has used the Course as a tool for whatever, mm -hmm. coming, transformation, transformation of his mind. Well, that's a, that's a metaphor. You know, you could say David has met such and such teachers along his path and he studied under da 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 da. That's a metaphor. Once you come to the awareness of the clarity, you realize that none of that was diddly squat. That was just all projection and the Holy Spirit, the light in one's mind, that's how one came to the awareness of, of light. It was this abstract loving light that was help, helping work with the mind and all its beliefs. That's the, that's what has really been the, if you had to say tool or you had to say the, the guide to coming to transformation of consciousness, it's the Holy Spirit. It's not a person and a place, and it's certainly not a book. This is, but the, uh, the book, the persons, the places are all symbolic. And when the mind still believes it's in the world, that's all it knows. So it's a helpful metaphor to say, oh, the Course has been a, a meaningful tool. I don't see it that way anymore kind of funny. I think that a book could be meaningful. Could be causative. It's, you know, when you start to put it in those terms, hmm, tools <laughs> can seem to be helpful or causative, but they they aren't. So that's just like a real introductory lesson, but Again, everything we go on as we continue on, it will give the reasons why what you see is nothing, and nothing has no meaning. <coughs> it's just saying in the lesson one, it is necessary that I recognize this, that I may learn to see. If you could really, 
just in one instant see how the world arose, really see it, how the world arose, that would change everything. But it's when the mind doesn't remember how the world arose, it, it thinks that the world just is an objective reality and that it thinks that it's a body that came to the world that already was existing and it has completely forgotten how the world arose. It, it's forgotten that it's all a projection of the ego and that there's no world outside its own mind. But that's what we're, as we keep going into this, that's what will become more and more apparent. Finally, totally apparent. Number two, I have given what I see all the meaning it has for me. I have judged everything I look upon, and it is this and only this I see. The judgment? Mm -hmm. If we go into the metaphysics a little bit here for that first sentence, you know how I talk about ordering of thoughts? And that ordering of thoughts is judgment. That's what judgment is, it's the ordering of thoughts. So the mind orders its thoughts, orders all these concepts and images, and then they're automatically projected, because they don't come from God. And the judgment is too horrifying, it's too horrifying to hold on to the ego belief system and the Holy Spirit. So again, thoughts that don't come from God are automatically projected. It's not like the mind goes, hmm, what should I do with this? It's like, ah, <laughs> get it out of here. And so, again, the only way that the world, the perceptual world, is going to disappear is to give up the judgment, to give up the ordering of thoughts. There's going to be nothing ever, the, the screen will not just go away based on wishful thinking. Go away, go away, world, I don't want to see you anymore. I wish the world would just go away. Or that song, we were in Taco Bell yesterday and we heard the song Forever by Kenny Loggins. And one of the lyrics, and that was, Once I dreamed that you were gone. I cried, I tried to find you. I begged the dream to fade away and please awaken me. I begged the dream to fade away and please awaken me. No way! You think, you think that dream's going to listen to you? You've got to see, I am the dreamer of the dream. I, I made up the dream. I don't have to beg the dream to fade away and please awaken me. There's no way that the dream's going to fade away and awaken me. I have to see that I'm the dreamer of the dream and, and say, hmm, I'll give a new purpose to this dream. And then if, when I give the Holy Spirit's purpose to the dream, then the dream will fade away and I will be awakened. But it's different than thinking that there's something outside myself that's going to magically swoop down, rescue me, do something. <laughs> no way. There's no night shining armor that's going to come from the so-called outside world or from the dream. That's the thing with Jesus. I mean, they think Jesus is some kind of a magical knight in shining armor that is just going to come like in some of those interpretations of revelations, he's going to come down on his white horse and thank you, Jesus, oh, at last you're here to put an end to this terrible world. Take me, Lord, I've been good. Over there, huh? <laughs> let the, let death get that one. <laughs> they haven't been good, but take me, you know. Jesus said in the Bible, many will say, Lord, Lord. He'll say, know me not, <laughs> you know. Or I know you not. It has to be, it has to come back to, to seeing that the wor reason the world is in place, the reason there seems to be a world of separation is because I'm still holding on to separation thoughts. I'm still judging. Jesus isn't going to come in time and swoop down on some horse and save the world. That's not how the world is going to be saved. So, Again, the first sentence, I have judged everything I look upon, and it is this and only this I see. As long as the mind is judging, it's just looking upon a world of judgment that is produced by the, the ordering of thoughts. The world just 